Let's take another look at faux leather. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And today I'm having a look at the faux leather made from tea bags. So tea bags that you would have just by making a hot drink and or dyeing fabrics. We are then using the paper tea bag waste product to make a whole other material and so I'll just show you these are the tea bags that I've got here they're round ones well I've got square ones as well uh, but the ones in here are circles and uh, this is the little pouch that I store them in so I just uh, that I haven't got many left I need to drink more tea so this is one that I made um, oh, this is two years ago now that I made this, and um, it is made out of the tea bags, and it has been covered in ink and sp uh, sprayed on ink, oxide ink, and it's lined with paper, which was a coffee dyed paper with turmeric for the dyeing papers. There's a hot there. I think there's a playlist for dyed papers so have a look at that there's lots in there and uh, this would have been one of the papers and then I've just I've made an envelope of well I've made the tea leather tea bag leather and then I've lined it with the paper and made an envelope out of it. Brad I've got this decorative brad here which I, I just happen to have and I've, I think I've tied on or I've um, poked the brad through the ribbon made a hole in the ribbon and then put it through so that's tethered on there and then that's the closure so it wraps round comes round again and then on the bottom here I have tethered a key charm with some wire so that was something that I did a while ago and we can have a look at making envelopes in another video this isn't what I'm going to show you today so we are going to be using this faux leather to make um, some specimen cards some quite well I'm hoping they'll be a bit different um, I've not seen anybody do what I'm intending to do so we're uh, gonna make it up as we go this was the tea bags in the previous video when I made this pouch, if you haven't seen that, go and check it out. This is the original paper that I put on wax paper. So I'm just going to show you the footage of how I got to this colour and what I did. And you can see, I'll show you this one as well. This is very shiny. I do apologise, the glare on it's going to annoy you. Um, but the... I'll, sh I'll show you how I got to this point. OK, so I'm just having another go at this. I am putting my ink down onto the plastic surface. I am mixing in my white PVA glue, my school glue. That is a water soluble glue. And I'm just, I've sprayed water over the top to make the glue more runny. So we have a stained aged effect glue to begin with. I've got a selection of laundered tea bags. By that I mean I have washed them out. That one I haven't. I'm just making sure that I have overlap, which is something that I perhaps didn't do in the first, first one I tried. I'm painting over them as I go. Okay, so this is what we've made earlier. Um, I have dried it with a heat gun, but in doing so, I've realised that I've melted the wax on the wax paper, which I forgot about. I in my head it was parchment and then I realised it was wax. So the wax has nicely adhered to the tea bag paper and I can pull it apart and it will be okay. But I'm now thinking that's just an extra step and this is stabilising it and strengthening it. So there's no reason to remove that backing paper at all. It's only going to help me um, and strengthen up this, this piece. So why fight it when it's actually going to work in my face? I'm just going to glue that back down. I don't have light coloured inks, but I do have light coloured brown uh, acrylic paint. And what I want is this one to be more of a tan, whereas our other one we've done is a very dark brown. So I bought a, a very standard Amsterdam acrylic paint set. And you really only need your basic colours or a few good brown colours 
if you've got any children's paints, anything, anything brown, you can water it down and make a stain. And that's all I'm doing here. So that's a brighter yellow colour. And then I can adjust it as we go if I'm not happy. So a shot of water. Okay, these are the water bottles that I use. I can make these available to UK only subscribers. So if you're interested, let me know or get in touch with me and I can make I can give you a price for those. Unfortunately, it is too much at the moment to send out anywhere else for the water bottles because they are a bulky item and it's, it, it would just cost you a fortune in postage. I can't get over it. It's nearly $20 to just send something like that at the minute. So it's not worth it, guys. I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of, of um, glue to my painty mix here. And I think I probably want a drop more water. Okay. Okay, so I've got water, paint and glue. And I'm just making a nice consistency. And then I'm wanting to get it, I want it to get it on evenly without flooding it too much. And that is quite yellowy orange actually, so I'm not sure what I could do is keep it moving with a bit of water. So what I've just done is add quite a lot more water there. I really think this needs to be very, very liquidy to allow it to get into all the cracks and creases and create a good stain. I'm not quite sure about the colour, so I'm just adding in a little darker. Um, brown just to bring a wee bit more of a rich tone. It's a tacky dry now. I'm wanting to do a second coat, but this time I just want to bring in a slightly darker colour um, and just adding in a touch more of my burnt sienna. Removing the excess and then just working over and what I'm doing this time is I am very lightly just swiping it over the top I'm not pushing it in so we're just getting a different tone so you can still see the lighter color underneath and now we're getting a warmer color on the top so that's how that's looking now so I'll just remove this and just with the remaining paint, I'm just going to put that down here over the top of this old envelope because it's waste paint, so it it really you know it doesn't need to be waste when I can find a use for it. Okay, right now this is dry with the two-toned effect from the acrylic paint. I'm just going to spray it with a little walnut stain oxide ink and just to darken it a wee bit and just put the shot of water over it to oxidize it there as well and then I'm just going to dry the whole lot like that Okay, so I don't like the effect. I'm now going to reactivate it with water and I'm going to use this uh, tissue that I've been using to mop up the ink and I'm just going to do exactly that. I'm going to take some of it up and just move it around a bit. It's quite nice that it's settling into the creases, and I prefer that. So I'm, so I'm now getting 
more of what I was hoping. So there's a warmer tone there to it, which is great, much better. Now I haven't got too much of the splatters beyond just an aging effect there. So if I bring that up now, we're looking slightly more leathery. This is more exciting. I love that. So actually as a front cover of a possible journal, that is really quite interesting. Okay, so we don't stop there. Now I want to emphasise the crinkles. I've got vintage photo. I'm not sure if that... Oh, yes, that's perfect. Okay, vintage photo. Not a distress, just a normal. Actually, I'm going to try and avoid the circular bits that suggest it's a tea bag. And just smoothing it over. So now we've got more emphasis on the raised areas, looking more leather-like. And then what I'm going to do is take the shoe polish and just buff it all up. I would say that you get different results every time because it is just one of those things that it's fun to play with. Just sitting here quietly playing. Uh, this is a, I just think this is a quite a nice little weekend project because you could easily turn this into a book cover. You just line it with a thicker card, thicker piece of paper card and uh, turn that into a, a cover of a booklet, a leather booklet for your botanical journal, the outdoor recording of all of these plant species that uh, our Victorian ladies used to like to go and sketch or they used to go and discover new species of plant and record them and get their findings sent off to Kew Gardens. It's very satisfying just peeling that away. Right, let's remove the shiny uh, plastic sheet. Oh, lovely. This one is a nice uh, smell to it as well. So I put the um, scent in this one and uh, just a lovely waft <laughs> of uh, nice florals coming up at me. So that's what it comes off like when it has had its glue. And, that, and when you peel it off, this is the colour that you will achieve. And arguably, that's quite an interesting... That's quite interesting in itself. So you may get away with just a bit of ink and, and you can still have a, really, a very interesting sort of old world rag, like a hessian colour. OK, so this is a lunch napkin, which we've seen before. That was the paper napkin. And here is the same, another napkin, stuck down and glued in the same technique as this onto wax paper. And if I just show you, so this has been backed onto wax paper with napkin and glue. And this is the sound that you get from this paper. Okay, completely crinkly and noisy, a crunch and a crackle, but arguably a really fun texture. And this one with the glue, this is the noise this makes when... A little, a little bit plasticky, but ultimately just a floaty, nice fabric. Anyway, the point I'm getting at is that it's a lot softer. And I think there's quite a nice depth of colour here that could almost be rust, like rusty iron. I think you can see some of it there. And what I want to show you in this light, in this evening light, let's just take those bits away. I've got a rag here. And I'm just going to buff this up a wee bit and see if we can... So there we go. So now we've got a bit of a sheen and a shine, looking more like a leather. I might like to keep that as a journal cover or something. Well, it just tears. It's brilliant. Look at that. Yeah. 
journal cover possibly so we'll put that out the way and then I'm just going to have a look at this for this if you have such a thing as faux leather or you have some tea bags and some glue and a piece of plastic you can make your own mock leather if you don't have any acrylic paint and if you haven't got an abundance of ink and you are just not willing to get mucky you could if you could bear it put the glue down so that you get to this point and if you could take a tissue and a rag and you happen to have some black shoe polish you could make black faux leather without any need for any thing else like paint because the black would be dark enough to get you to where you could find um, it looks like leather so you could have a black leather with a black boot polish or shoe polish so specimen cards right well let's just have a little look so I've got um, an old greeting card here happy birthday card okay so this one just happens to be six inches so that is pretty good I shall just chop it in half at the three inch mark let's have a look so I'm coming in one centimeter or yeah I'm, just, I'm gonna do it in centimeters Be better right so what was that then yep so it's one centimeter all the way around one centimeter frame all the way around and then I'm just going to go corner to corner that's it that looks nice nice and even so I think that's a nice even frame because we can see that we've got our triangles all looking nothing feels wonky so that's a good frame um, and then I want the same over here okay so that's fine so for this you're going to need some card that you're going to cut like that you're going to measure it out and make frames we're going to cut out the crisscross square and be left with the frame it doesn't matter what's on it perfectly fine to be junk mail we're going to cover it then you're going to need something that's brown, something that's leather-like or a fabric, cotton fabric or some paper that you have dyed, something a bit um, leather-esque. So we're wanting it to look like leather if we can. Then what I'm going to do, so you want that, you want that, and then you want something to look like glass. Well, we've got an abundance of old packaging and wrapping and the, everything that I know gets... Um, put into cellophane packets still so if you've got these sort of thing these are good to keep for your specimen cards so if you've got something like that that is useful so you're going to want something that's going to fit this section so we've got that so those two will fit in there so I'm going to make two specimen cards today using that plastic Okay, the next thing to do is cut out the rectangle with the crisscross to make a frame. We're going to cut out the whole lot and the correction bit there, I'm going to come in and cut that on the new line that we made. So just using a little knife here, cutting down and then going all the way round like that. So we're left with that. So we've got a frame, that's for something else. And if you haven't got a cutting mat or a knife, then you would put your uh, scissors in and you would cut it out with your scissors. So you'd, you'd put your scissors through the middle point and then you just go round and cut it out with your scissors. And what we want to have is the fabric and that is going to be the same size as the frame. I'm going to have to go this way with it because I'm wanting to wrap it. Okay, so if you've got something like this, we're just going to square off this little bit of fabric here, this leather fabric that we've got. And we're going to turn it over so we've got the inside showing up 
and you put your frame down. Then what you need to do is from the top fold down so we've got it covered there and fold along. From the bottom you fold up, fold along and then open it out and then from the side from the top or the bottom doesn't matter fold it down and then up at the bottom as well so we have created like a little folding packet okay so make sure you can see that then take the frame out so now you've got areas here where you can see this crisscrossing and what you do is you just cut on an angle so you cut the corner off like that so that is just a triangle that we're cutting off and you just don't go in side of that line there's you want to stay slightly outside the line that one's a bit tricky to see um, but there that's the center point where they all join uh, so I'm just cutting it ever so slightly away from that middle point there just cutting the corners off okay so those are useful to keep we'll keep those to one side for another time and so when you fold that in we now get a nice nice corner there nice sharp corner that's how you do that then you want to take your frame put it back this is your guide piece all right, so now you can see that you can wrap that up really well and it's all going to fit in. Um, and then keeping that in place, take your ruler and maybe a pen that you will be able to see. We go corner to corner with the ruler, taking the pen and just, oops, So corner to corner with the pen, draw a nice line and then we do the same here. Okay so hopefully you can see there's a cross in the middle. And then all I'm doing is poking, uh, if you haven't got sharp scissors, find a pokey tool or a needle just make a little hole right in the centre, X marks the spot, cut up the line on all four, all four lines, okay, like that, roughly, doesn't matter, if you go wonky it does not matter, just go up to where you can see the line finish, and then you've got that. So with this, it is a double thickness, it's a bag I think, you know, it had something in it, I can't find the top, there we go, the top's up there, so it's sealed there. So what I want to do is put my frame on it and I want to get this same width as this frame, it can come in slightly but it needs to fit inside here so I'm going to put it down on that crease. And then I'm just going to cut it to the same size. Okay. And then turning it around. Okay, so that was from that bag, so that's one. So cut down the plastic to size, that's it. So we've got our plastic pieces, put those to one side. Okay, so now the next thing to do is to get your frame in position. Okay, when you've got this and you're happy that your frame is going to sit there, we're going to snip away just a small amount, about half an inch just from the point like that just taking off that small little corner
Okay, so losing the corners, we've now got this. Just check. And then we'll trim as we go. So I want to put glue on this now and get this stuck down. Okay, stick the frame down. And then more glue along here. I'm using a strong silicone glue. I'm using Fabri-Tac here. Three in one would be great if you've got it. Anything like that. One of the stronger Yoohoo. Anything but stick glue. That stick glue isn't going to work. You need a sticky tacky glue. So now glue down the inside pieces. You just want to trim away from your frame so making sure that it just sits in there nicely so that one's going to be a bit too long can you see it's a little bit wide so we just want to take off that bit there and this one's the same okay trim it to fit glue everybody down Where's the back part? so just squash that down really pull that round turning it over and checking on the other side we can see how that has given it a really nice finish as that's curled round and then that will be the same so this will be a leather frame here it'll curl round it's all going to look like that so that is a leather frame okay so we've got that all about to be stuck down okay so I am now going to put in the flowers for my special place to preserve them my special herbarium now this let's say that this is a very special sample and we're just adding it in here we're going to want some tweezers perhaps and um, some good glue and then the specimens I've got here I've got this one so I'll just lie it up here for a minute and see how that might work. Okay, so I'm opening up my little cellophane bit here. Okay, I'm just putting a little bit of glue. And then we're going to put that down here. So just take that and put that down. And then the same for everything else. Oh, very fragile because I've just pulled some petals off. So just have to be very careful. A little blob of glue going down. Okay, so that will be that. And I just want to make sure... Okay, that's fine. All right, so then I'm not going to see the sides because they're going to be tucked in. So a little bit of glue along the top there. And then we are going to put the specimens in the little bit here. and then gluing all the way around okay adding in the specimens then check we're happy pretty good pretty good
And then I think this one, I'm going to want some clips on. So specimens are now in a special frame. I think, if we can see it in this light without it being too shiny, I think that we have achieved something really cool. Right, there we go. And I think that's great. And then these can be stuck down as just like a feature. So if you had a backing card, that could become a side tuck. A very cool side tuck. Very exciting. So we've just received in the in the second post the specimens that have arrived from Edinburgh, the Regis Keeper. Um, Bailey Balfour has sent down the specimens and he has verified that they are definitely, they are n undiscovered plants that were sent back from the Him Himalayas. He's verified them, checked, he's cross-referenced them with Kew Gardens and these specimens are definitely ones that have now been able to be named by Arthur and Harriet Bully. And here they are, the little alpine flowers that have been sent down. And uh, these are the two that have been particularly chosen and they are now going to be very special as part of the... <laughs> part of the um, Bully collection at Nest Gardens. So there we go. Um, they they have been received and um, they are now in going to be honorary position in this very special book. And what we need to do is give them their labels and their place in this book, which is so that you know these are special alpine flowers which have been named with a great honour of giving the name of the plant collector and so the bulliana fleur 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 is now going to be labelled over here and the very special alpine flowers that were collected um, on the foothills of Tibet are going to also have their label as just as soon as I can find where that has disappeared to. Here we go. So, here we are in the journal. We've got this specimen card here. So that just wants a nice little little bit of ink. And then it is going to join the Hall of Fame. A little bit of brown ink just on this. Now, these are Tim Holt's Field Notes snippets. And it's very uh, fitting because it says specimen there. So I've got those. They come in a pack. I, I like to have these on hand. I use them a lot. I like the little cards and the little tickets. They're just some. They're a little something that you can add. Field note snippets. They are good. They're a good buy. They are very useful. I do like adding those here and there, especially on tags. So I'm just going to put that in the corner there and see what that looks like. There you go. So oop, get the glue off of it, so you can see it says specimen. And that one's going to live there, I think. And then this one. So this is my second one that I made. Um, I've made it a little bit thinner in the frame just to see what that looked like. And I've put my uh, flowers in there like that. So, you know, it's not perfect and things will probably fall off. But once it's on the page, it should be okay. I haven't... Um, taken as much time as I would like so I think if it was if you sat down and made a real morning of it you could get a few of those done very nicely it's a little bit more involved I really felt like gosh this is a proper pastime this is one something that somebody would have sat because you really do need to get the tweezers and get it in position you've got to really rethink your glue you don't want anything too stringy yeah so I, it, it is it is a pastime uh, plant, um, not plant collecting, well you do that and then you dry it but the dried flower arrangements onto a piece of perspex or a piece of acetate, a piece of card even, doesn't have to be see-through, I just wanted to make it like um, that they were trapped in glass, you know these are the famous specimens that that have come from the foothills of the Himalayas, this sort of business. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick them straight down. They're not very 
pleasing to look at on the back. I could back them completely with something else. I did toy with that idea, but arguably I quite like to see the images, so I could do something like that. But then that that's more interesting that they're sort of floating there, I think. So we're going to want Fabri-Tac for this. What have I learnt? OK, I have learnt that I have had an immense amount of fun with some old tea bags and paint. Um, if I was going to make these exact ones again, I would probably have a play about with making the frame, but then maybe seeing if I could lose the frame. So I just fold in the pieces once I've once I've worked it around the frame, can I then fold them without having the frame and thus making them thinner? Um, what else? I would use tea bag paper that didn't have a backing paper on it. That would make it thinner. So my quest would be to make it thinner, and there's absolutely a way to do that. I would definitely just use one single layer of tea bag. I would stain it with the watered down acrylic paint. I would then leave it all to dry, do an oxide spray of the Tim Holtz Distress range and then I would buff the whole lot up with some shoe polish. And then that very, very fine fabric is what I would use to wrap around my frame. And yes, so it was a bit of a thicker leather leather consistency to start off because it had the wax paper. Um, but they work out brilliantly and it doesn't matter because this journal can take it. So I'm just going to pop those aside for two seconds. I'm going to add some trim down here. I just like these for my central signature pieces. I like the little peep through of the fabric or the cotton um, crocheted sort of bobbin lace whatever whatever it is we're calling it. This is a nice natural colour it could of course be stained and grunged up and made to look darker so I could put my uh, ink down it just but I don't want to really so um, I'm quite happy with it being cream because it's already an off-white and that just works so nicely with the little connector there and then I've got these blue beads hanging off here with an oriental feel to them they're like a chinoiserie <laughs> for the uh, uh, 1930s and um, then I'm going to have my herbarium specimens on here as well so hopefully when when we have see they look very nice as two on a page and then maybe something else here. So I really do like that. It gives you a sense of something quite homely with this being put down the side here. So I like that. I thought you'd like that as well. Just like to see it. It's just sort of a traditional, very um, antique look. Real kind of English eccentric sort of ideas of putting things in, in glass so you wouldn't just have that you'd have butterflies all pinned down and beetles and is it ornitho no ornithology is birds what what is it entomology that's it entomology where you have the specimens all behind glass so I think it's um, fine I mean I've seen things like this before maybe I think my my mock leather is um more akin to rusty metal but that kind of works as well because it could have been a copper frame it could have been could well have been a copper frame so we just got to decide where we want them do we want them more over there this one here we're reflecting let's come up a bit oh yes that's quite, quite nice isn't it swap over have a look look uh, maybe that one equally nice what I want them to do is when this page turns over it hits this one here that's fine so it doesn't hit that one here that's fine 
so it's got to go there. Oh, this is a 1923, maybe, what does that say? What date is that, please? I can't see it. 28? 23? Squiggle? Not sure. <laughs> oh, 1912 there. Oh, I don't know. Any In any case, it's 1912. Old piece of paper. And look, it's got the where they used to have a rusty pin. So that's just going in there, just to give the mood, a little bit of a mood. I'm going to put that down there, I believe. Do I want that? Last minute change. No, it's going to be that. OK, so I want Fabri-Tac. I like the fact that there's lots of flexibility to that tea bag leather. Mock, tea bag mock leather. Tether. <laughs> what can we call it? Yeah, tether. My my faux tether. <laughs> now, if this was going to be seen on the back, I would have spent a bit more time making sure that everything matched up and looked a bit more perfect. But you know what? We're junk journaling, and this is already pretty spectacular in its way that that's going down there and really looking like something quite authentic. So I, I'm very pleased with the outcome of what has happened here. I'm just a little bit mindful that that is that going to touch. No, I think that just nestles in there nicely. I can't see that that's lumpy. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. I might just slide it up a bit. What you could have here is um, some writing space, sort of a raggedy piece of paper could be stuck down there. Um, or you could write directly onto there. So, but I just I think as a as a, a focal piece in the in the journal, I think that's lovely. I think that's just a nice little find, and really is starting to become something quite quite complete now on the, on these pages. So we're getting there, aren't we? And then this one, I found this beautiful card, which is. Heather, and this is an old vintage card. And uh, Heather was definitely one of the plants that uh, they used to swap seeds for. All the different varieties of heather that grew up in the Scottish Highlands, definitely of interest to Arthur Bully and his wife. And they brought them back to Nest Gardens. So we are coming to the end of this as of next week. So I shall just be throwing. Uh, the last bits at it and I shall be completing things off the camera as well so you can see here I just I couldn't help myself I've got all, all a bit more botanicals up here um, and I've added two little butterflies so the stamps that I put behind you can't actually see them but we know they're there and I will bring them in onto other pages. So those stamps, uh, for those that asked, were Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous. Stampers Anonymous um, like that. And they are called Illustrated Garden, but I, I think these might be discontinued now. You can get them. You can get them from stampersanonymous.com. Okay, so they that is code CMS. Two nine five. All right, guys. So I'm going to leave it there, and I thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found some fun and certainly some value as we've been learning all about how to use the leather and what can be achieved with some pressed flowers from from the outside, making these really cool specimen frames. And um, yeah, just you know, look at your waist waste products in a different light because this could definitely be turned into this if this has been worthwhile for you do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and above everything else guys just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now